as a kid, you don't see everything in black and white. There is so much more to your world. I knew I was happy, had a loving family around me, and a mom who cooked great food. My mother rarely let us eat fast food. McDonald's was always a treat. Even though I had these delicious home-cooked meals, I remember being mad and thinking, why can't we have McDonald's more for dinner? <laughs> yeah, we moaned and groaned about not having our good old greasy hamburgers, but we didn't know how good we had it. This realization came later in my life, during college, in fact. At my school, Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, everyone has their core credits to take. One of these classes is a health and nutrition class. Taking this class was one of the first steps to opening my eyes about the food we eat and how it affects our bodies. Dr. Wagner taught us about high fructose corn syrup and how to read labels properly, amongst other things. In fact, after one of these classes, I proceeded to go to the cafeteria for lunch like I usually do. And as I walked up to get my usual high C orange drink, I looked over at the label, and to my horror, it said 0% juice. <laughs> I screamed out, 0% juice? What are we drinking? <laughs> People looked at me like I was crazy, like, what is, what is she doing? <laughs> After that class was done, I started reading labels a little bit more when I went to the grocery store and eating a little better. But it wasn't until year, years later that the way I looked at food would be profoundly impacted. What truly opened my eyes was media, film to be exact. One day I was sitting at home with my girlfriend and she decided to put on Food Inc. After watching the film, all I could think was, this is crazy, how did I not know about what is going on with my food? How do the American people not know what is going on with their food? I watched several more films after that, including Forks Over Knives, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and Food Matters. All of these films expose how our diets, mainly a Western one, is toxic to our health. Our diets are causing diseases such as high blood pressure and diabetes to spread rapidly. And more and more of our youth are being affected by these diseases because we are eating highly processed foods that are full of fat, sugar, and sodium. We as adults may know better, but it's not always that simple. And the kids do not know any better. They do not know that they are being targeted by an industry that is overall unhealthy for them. Kids watch an average of 10 food-related ads a day. Nearly 98% of these ads are for food products that are high in fat, sugar, and sodium. So of course these kids are going to want to reach for that high-processed snack full of sugar rather than going for that apple. But I don't have to tell that to this crowd. <laughs> As a food core service member, I see and hear things every day that is changing this from being the norm. I see kids eager to eat the cabbage I prepared for our Harvest of the Month taste test and coming back for seconds and thirds. I see kids eager to get out into the garden and get their hands dirty, being open to trying new things, and them coming up to me and telling me how they made that recipe that we prepared in class at home with their family members. All of the warm and fuzzies, as we affectionately call them, are what's groundbreaking. I want to be able to take these stories and tell them through a lens. Over the years, I have learned that film and media is a powerful way for people to access information. That's why, in addition to being a hands-on educator with kids, I'm pursuing a career in film. <laughs> My dream is to produce videos that showcase sustainable and positive lifestyles that lead to a better world. These videos will showcase grassroots solutions that are viable, such as 
healing through food, alternative medicines, and clean energy technologies. I want to be able to inform the communities, especially my own, about what is going on with their food and the complex issues surrounding the food system. That's why I'm currently working on a concept that highlights African American leaders in urban agriculture. These leaders are integrating gardens and farms into their community that not only beautify them, but also provide an access to cheap, healthy produce. Just as film opened my eyes, I want to be able to do the same for others. Instead of being swayed to make a decision without all of the information, I want people, especially the youth, to be able to make a conscious decision, decision for themselves. Every person has a story. Each experience they go through adds on to that story. I want to take these stories, add them to a lens, to create that same story told through moving pictures. What I'm about to share with you all is my own story, a little snippet, if you will, about my service with City Blossoms in Washington, D.C. D.C., the capital of the United States and the place where I serve as a food court service member. The service I do in this city is helping to empower the youth I work with, teaching them a new normal that their food can come from their own gardens or community gardens down the street, showing them that vegetables aren't scary, but really awesome and delicious. It's paving the way for young entrepreneurs in agriculture to bloom. As a food court service member, I am helping to plant a seed in these young minds and hearts, a seed that will become deeply rooted, while they teach me that one person can make a difference in their community, helping to build our future one garden at a time.